OK, so um, now we know, in some sense, how to solve a quadratic equation using the various methods of factoring or foiling, uh, completing the square, using quadratic formula. OK, fine, we can solve quadratic equations. But sometimes we'll be given a word problem, and when we set up the word problem that is converting the words to you know, unknown variables and so forth, we'll actually end up with some sort of equation that will be quadratic. There'll be x's to squared powers and so forth. So then, um, well, how do you deal with that? Well, the thing to do, of course, is to carefully convert the word problem to the math stuff and then solve the math stuff, just like we did before with the, um, with the linear equations. So it's just time again, once again, for another installment of solving real world problems. Um, and again, we put the quotes on the real world. So let's start right now by taking a look at the following. So here's some garbage you can see here. If I take away this, some dirty socks. And of course, under the dirty socks, voila, is a dorm room. No surprise there. So in fact, this brings up an interesting question. So you can see the, the big mega speakers, sort of futon couch, coffee table, some lamps. And there is the dorm room, rectangular dorm room. Let's take a look at the question. So the perimeter of this rectangular dorm room is 34 feet. Okay, so that's the length around the whole thing, 34. And we're told that its area is 60 square feet. The question is, uh, what is the dimension of the room? So uh, what is the length and the width of the room? Okay, well, how can we figure this out? Well, let's think about this for a second together. Um, we don't know the length or the width. Those are unknown. So let me give them names. Let me call the width um, W. You can call them x and y, of course, if you want. I'm just going to call them w, and, and I'll call the length l. I'm just naming these unknowns. Notice that, that I'm doing this, or you know, we're doing this together. It's not given to us in the problem. Um, but now I can talk about these things in a mathematical way. So I can take all the words there and convert them to some sort of mathematical fact. So for example, the first thing there says that the perimeter is equal to 34. So what does that mean? It means that the, the length around is 34. So let's add that up. Well, that's an L plus a W plus another L, so that's 2L, plus another W, so that's 2W. So I see 2L plus 2W, and that has to equal 34. So that first sentence there can be converted to 2L plus 2W equals 34. Now in fact, actually, I'm going to do a little more work, but let me just, before I get too involved, let me just realize that I can divide everything through by 2 and simplify this a little bit. If I do that, if I, if I factor out the 2 here and divide, I would see L plus W equals half of 34, which would be 17. So in fact, the first sentence that we're given leads to this. Not exactly, but after cancellation. OK, so there's the first sentence. Uh, and what else are we told? We're also told that the area, the area of this dorm room is 60 square feet. And how do you compute area? Well, area is base times height. So that would be L times W would equal 60. So we know that L times W equals 60. OK, so those are the two facts that were given. In fact, maybe I should. To be fair, um, mark this. These are the two facts that I've just weaned, gleaned, gleaned from the question. OK, and now what's the question asking? They're asking for what are the dimensions. So what is L and what is W? So what I need to figure out is what these things are. I can't solve this because I have two equations, but I also have two things I don't know. I have two unknowns. So what should I do? Well, one technique is just to take a look at one of these equations and try to get one of the variables to disappear and become the first variable. So if I could have this equation just have L's in it, then I could solve it. How can I do that? Well, one way of doing that is by looking at this equation and realizing I can solve this for W. Let me actually solve this for W. In fact, I can even do this in my head. All I've got to do is take that L and bring it to the other side. And I would see W equals 17 minus L. So this equation can be written as follows. It's identical to w equals 17 minus l. I just took this and solved. But the beauty of that is that now, in place of this w right here, I can insert its twin, which is 17 minus l. So what I'm going to do now is go back to this 
which has two things I don't know, and I'm going to replace one of the unknown things by something that has the same unknown thing I already have. And if I do that, what I would see is, I would see the L times W, which I'm now going to write as 17 minus L equals 60. And now what you notice is I have just one equation in one unknown, and I can solve. In fact, you may say, gee, it's factored, so I have two things factoring, and so one is in another one. No, no, no. Remember, to solve a quadratic, we have to have everything equals 0. So what I want to do, in fact, is pull everything over. So pull that 60 over, which means I'm going to have to factor this using some sort of other method. Let me first distribute that, that, 17, that, that L, rather, not only to the 17, but also to the second L. And when I do that, what I see is 17L minus L squared equals 60. And if I bring everything over to the right-hand side, what I see is the following. I see 0 on the left. And on the right, I'll see if I bring this minus L squared over, it becomes a plus L squared. So I have L squared. If I bring the 17L over to this side, I see a, um, a minus 17L. And then I still have that plus 60. And my hope is that this can be factored somehow. So let's see if I can factor this. So I have 0 equals. So I'm going to put an L and an L. The plus sign tells me they're both the same, and this minus sign tells me they're both minuses. I need two numbers whose product is going to be 60, but they combine together to produce 17. How about 5 and 12? Because that will give me a minus 5L and a minus 12L combined to give a minus 17L. And minus 5 times minus 12 is, in fact, 60. So this is looking good. I'm running out of room here, so let me actually just cover up some of the previous work that we have here. And let me just keep going. So now what do I see? So therefore, these two factors multiply together to give 0. So I solve this just like always with a quadratic. Either this equals 0 or this equals 0. If this equals 0, that means that L would equal 5. Or the other possibility is that L minus 12 is 0, which means L equals 12. So it looks like I have two solutions, and I've got to find out you know, which one is the right one. Well, uh, to first of all, what would the W be? Well, remember what W is. I'm going to slide this down a little bit. W is 17 minus L. So if L equals 5, then what would W be? Well, it would be 17 minus 5, which is 12. On the other hand, if L equals 12, what would W be? Well, W would be 5. So what you notice is we get sort of the same dimensions either way, but it raises sort of an interesting philosophical question. You know, what distinguishes length from width, right? I mean, if I have a rectangle like this, $100 bill, OK, now this is, looks like the length and that's the width. But of course, I could do it right this way, and now this is the length and this is the width. So and this is the width and this is the length. The point is, you know, we're getting the same answer. We're seeing it's 5 by 12. So using the quadratic formula, we see the answer is 5 by 12. And so there we see the room is 5 feet by 12 feet. Sounds like a good sized dorm room, doesn't it? And there's a bonus question here. How many roommates live in the room? Obviously, if it's a 5 by 12, it's so spacious, it's almost a suite. Obviously, there will be six students living there. And in fact, maybe we should let them alone. And I'll put back the dirty socks so they can have their privacy. You can see, by the way, the big fancy speakers, the futon, the chair. Let them all go back. All right, enjoy. Try these problems with the quadratic.